Hi folks, Paul here and today I just want to make a quick video to uh, touch on a fungus that is um, very widely overlooked in the fire lighting department um, particularly by me up until this point I've kind of been experimenting with it today and uh, I've discovered that it's actually really quite useful and um, when we think of fire lighting and when it comes to funguses we tend to think of two usual suspects the first one is the horsehoof fungus and the second is chaga um, you could also say cramp balls are up there as well. Um, but one that is often overlooked is birch polypore. Now I'm sure many of us have seen this growing on trees. It's very, very plentiful in comparison to the other three. And uh, it grows kind of in a wider area as well, I've noticed. And um, like I say, I think it's very often overlooked and it was definitely overlooked by me up until this point as a fungus that was good for carrying fire. And... Um, I guess that's due in fact to, you know, we're humans, we like routine, we like to try and use the same stuff and become familiar with something until we know it really, really well. And we don't like to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone. But one of the biggest skills I think you can have, without getting too preachy, I don't want this to be like a, you know, a preachy video, but one of the biggest skills I think you can have as an outdoorsman or outdoorswoman is to have a bit of creativity in you, to be able to go and look at something and say I wonder if that would work for you know X Y and Z and that's just what I've been doing today with this fungus and I've discovered that it works using iron pyrite and um, flint which is my preferred method of primitive fire lighting and uh, I was under the impression wrongly that there was only a few funguses and um, birch polypore wasn't one of them that you could use so I've proven something to myself I've learned something new and I just want to share it with you guys because like I say Birch polypore, I think, is something that's quite often overlooked. So I've got a little pile of it here. My plan today is just to make a little fire and boil some water in my bowl and make a tea. But I've got a little pile of um, some birch polypore here. Now all I've done is take a serrated piece of flint. This is a bit of flint I napped, and it's very heavily serrated. And what that means is I can, you know, scrape a fungus and get some really nice fine shavings off it. So all I've done is just collect a pile of those and now all I need to do is drop a spark into it. Now I will say that um, birch polypore works better as a way of transporting fire so it works better when it's like this and you can put an ember into it and it'll carry fire for a long time. It does work for catching a spark however it's not as efficient as say amadou. And the reason for that is it's just it just doesn't burn the same. Um, the way it's made up is slightly different and therefore it doesn't kind of take the spark and smolder straight away. You've kind of got to, um, you've got to be very careful with it. And uh, it takes a wee bit longer than Amadou, however, nonetheless it can be used. And uh, like I say, this was something that's totally new to me and I, I wanted to share it. So I'm going to try and drop a spark into this and see if I can get it to take. Like I say, it's not as quick as Amadou, which you can get in a couple of strikes. but. Um, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding, so let's uh, give it a go. So all I'm using is a piece of iron pyrites, which is a, a natural form of iron, and a piece of flint to strike it. And what that does is produce sparks. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen me use this already, so I won't go into detail. And uh, all I'm going to do is try and drop a spark into this. Now what happens with this is the spark lands on the pile and the um, fungus begins to kind of smolder, but it doesn't really take, so you've got to... Uh, be quite persistent and you've got to fan it very thoroughly to get it to take. You want to, to try and encourage a lot of heat in there. So we'll see how we get on with it. So I can see it sort of landing in the pile and starting to smolder and I'd imagine you guys probably can't even really see it. I've actually got an ember there and um, it's just a case of making sure it's got plenty of um, fuel and plenty of air. You need to fan this a lot more than you do with um, say Amadou for instance. It needs a lot of air to be able to catch the fungus around it. But you can see we've got an ember there so I'm going to just give it a little bit more fuel. And um, much like the other methods of lighting Amadou, um, 
This isn't a process that can be rushed, it's very much a case of sitting and letting the ember build slowly over time and there's nothing you can do really to speed it up. You can make sure you're getting plenty of air into it just by fanning your hand backwards and forwards and um, that's about as much as you can do to encourage it. So I'm going to make this into a bigger ember and then I'll uh, come back to you once I've got it established enough that we can blow it to flame hopefully. But before I do that, I'll bring you guys in close so you can get a look at the ember. Just so you can see it's there and you can see how it's reacting. And so you know there's no witchcraft involved. Okay, so you can see the ember there. And um, it builds much slower than Amadou, I've noticed that. And it uh, takes a wee bit longer to actually come together. However it is there and it is slowly building. Okay so like I say I'm just going to leave this to build for a wee while longer and then hopefully we'll get it to the point where we can uh, blow it to flame. Okay, so I've got it fairly well established now. You can see it's starting to char on the outside and it's starting to behave as one solid piece as opposed to lots of individual small pieces, which is what we want. So at this point I'm going to transfer it into my, um, my bird's nest and uh, we'll see how we get on. Now I will say, before I try and blow this into flame, that it's um, been a very damp few days here and my tinder bundle is a bit wet. so. Uh, We'll see how we get on, but I'm not making any promises. <laughs> okay, so I've just gently tipped it into the bird's nest there. Hopefully you can see that. And now I'm going to try and blow it into flame. There we have it. Okay folks, so I hope that's been useful, um, like I say, you know, it's worth looking into things and um, I often get asked, you know, what kind of books do I read, where do I learn the stuff that I know, you know, and so on and so forth. And uh, truth be told, I don't really read a lot of books or watch lots of videos or anything like that. A lot of the stuff I do comes from my creativity, you know, I look at something and I think, I wonder what would happen if I tried this, or I wonder what would happen if I tried to do that to that. And um, like I say, it's it's a skill worth you know worth trying to develop. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll uh, catch you all again soon.